Here once again. We invite you to Armor of Light Ministries. And as we come together to worship the Lord, we pray that God will bless you. We pray that your hearts will be lifted in the mighty name of Jesus. We're coming from the island of Barbados. And God is so good. Mm. And He is so mighty. We just want to give Him thanks today. We want to praise His name. Father, we thank you. Hallelujah. You are a good, good God. We thank you, dear God, for every soul, dear Father, that is listening, oh God, to this video today. Father, we pray, dear Father, that your mighty hand, dear Father, will take control of every situation and of every life. In Jesus' name. Father, we declare that every heart, dear God, will lift, dear Father, to you, dear God. Father, that people will open up their hearts and their minds, dear Father. We pray for understanding. We pray for knowledge, God. We pray for wisdom. We pray, dear God, that your divine presence, dear Father, will fill and flood our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray for the ministers that are going to minister today, Father. Bless them, Father. Let your anointing be upon them, dear Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we give you all glory, we give you all honor, and we give you all praise. Amen. Amen.
lesson will be read by our elder Carolyn Morris. The lesson is taken from Psalms 63, verses 1 to 11, and it reads, O God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee, my soul thirsteth for thee, my flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. To see thy power and thy glory, so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. Because thy love and kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. When I remember thee upon my bed, and meditate on thee in the night watches, because thou hast been my help, therefore in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. My soul followeth hard after thee, thy right hand upholdeth me. But those that seek my soul to destroy it shall go into the lower parts of the earth. They shall fall by the sword. They shall be a portion for foxes. But the king shall rejoice in God. Everyone that sweareth by him shall glory. But the mouth of them that speak lies shall be stopped. Matthew 5 verse 6. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Hebrews 11 Verses 23 to 28. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents, because they saw he was a proper child, and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Esteeming the reproach of Christ greatest riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Through faith he kept the Passover, and the sprinkling of the blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. Here end of the reading for this evening. Mother Graves is going to help me sing now Springs of Living Water. Oh, I'm proud to be 
personally I struggle with pastor, pastor. But um, when I think about hunger and thirsting, I think of it as a part of life, like, um, a part of living. Everyone at some point in his or her life gets hungry or gets thirsty. So if you are not getting hungry or thirsty, this is in the natural at some point, um, something is wrong. When I, as a, a mother, right, if you have a baby, and you want a baby, and that baby has no desire to eat, has no desire to milk, something is wrong, you have to take that child to a doctor or something to get it checked out. If you're giving the child the breast and the child refusing the child to turn away, it's safe or it's insane, you have to give them um, milk from the can and pull the milk, you know, to see, you have to find a way to get something inside because that is how they're going to get nourishment, that is how they're going to grow. So as it is naturally, it is spiritually. So if you're not hungry and certain, it is a recipe for spiritual death. Whoa. So you're saying it is only natural, and if it doesn't happen, something is wrong. Mm -hmm. The early, early living entity has hunger, and third, what would be most easy? <laughs> you could believe that. I more than believe it. They come here and they get very violent if you don't let them get something to eat. And especially those that are, the, as you said, the mothers. Uh, they're desperate, right? Uh, this is not a subject this evening that we can gloss over. This is serious. Uh, as one of you said, the, every one of us have this inner drive. Mm -hmm. In this particular instance, this is, these are the words of Jesus. Blessed are they that do hunger and thirst. But he says, after righteousness. No, we're not going to go into righteousness yet. But this scripture also connects with uh, Matthew 6, 33. But seek ye first. If you look at the if you look at the verses before verse 33, you're pretty sure you're talking about the natural things that people are going after. And there's nothing wrong with going after natural things. There you are listening to this uh this video. There's nothing wrong with having a thirst for education, a thirst to have uh, a nice place to live in and transportation and all that. It's beautiful, beautiful. But I think that what we have to bring up this evening is that what Jesus is saying is, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So if we go after all the other things first and invoke righteousness and the kingdom, it seems as though we won't get very far. Am I right? You are absolutely yeah. right. Because there is a part here in your reference, which we'll be talking about. You see in Matthew 26, your reference, and it is um, number two. The Christian hunger for the things of God is destroyed by worthy anxiety. Deceitfulness, by, by worthy anxiety. Worthy anxiety. Mm -hmm. Deceitfulness of riches. What does that mean, deceitfulness of riches? <laughs> yeah. The thing with that is that you, 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 you want to be so rich or you, you, you have a money to be so rich that you can be deceitful about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That means that you will step on shoulders Anybody. and head and, and to get the rhythm. As you say that, I, 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 I remember there was a lady that came shopping. Said, said, if you want promotion, 
You want to remind them who you step upon. Go right to hell. As much as to tell you, it doesn't matter. So long as you're getting to the position that you would want. In terms of you would be hurting others. The, the, other, the other one we got to is that it says desire for things and worldly pleasures. That's why when it comes to the stairs, all of it, you become empty because you will never be fit. Yeah. And my sister, you go to, at the end there, it says, when the hunger of believers for God and his righteousness is destroyed, they will be spiritual. Yes, sir. You have a point. Um, I don't know if it's Keep going. 
right? And I just talked to myself, right? And I, I made decisions and I made choices and I said, no, this is, this is not what I want. But you know, we say sometimes that you have to face reality. Sometimes the children say, Oh my name, he's old. She's old. She lived his life already. She lived her life already. He got to enjoy himself because he's young. He definitely don't understand. Huh? So who do you respond to a young person who will say to you, you could afford to say that now because you passed through. And you enjoy yourself very well. You want to enjoy yourself. Well, Um, what can I say and what can I do? 
Show me by example what it is to be a child of God and um, as I said, uh, testify because many times we have testimonies that we can share and we watch the, the young ones, you know, go through the stuff they're going through, knowing that we have been there. And the hard thing about it is that um, testimonies are not always received well when they are at that point because they don't understand it. They don't understand it, they can't see it. But one day, when they look back, they can remember, you know, sister just told me that, this person told me that. But the most for me that I can do is keep, keep talking to them, keep encouraging them, keep praying for them, right? Um, this is all, all you can do because I can't beat them, right? But they all have choices. <laughs> they, all, they all have choices. We all have choices. And at the end of the day, um, I can only save myself if my righteousness, my righteousness cannot um, save my children. Right? Nothing can do like um God is praying for them. That they will, you know, receive and open up and come to understanding a higher level of, you know, wisdom. Any member of the audience there uh, have a question you want to ask? You can think of it in the meantime. But um going back to this thing. Blessed are they who do hunger and thirst after righteousness. So they didn't all go to the university then to learn about righteousness. Then they go, how, how are we going to learn about this righteousness? And how is it going to add up when you have to pay the rent? I don't even want to get a piece of transportation to me, you know, we, we, how, how is this going to pay the bills? Okay. Okay. First thing, righteousness means just being doing the right thing. And with that understanding, because I'm saying it now, I can only say it to you now. What I am understanding now at this age and stage of my life, more so than before, because there were things that this, even you as yourself as a leader, would have spoken to me time and time again, like everything else, and I would not have understood what he was saying because I felt within myself how I was living, my way of living, I was doing the right thing. And you can talk to me about responsibility. But I have come to a, a place now of a better awareness and understanding because God has sought to speak to me in the center of my life now. And having wise counselors, having an example before me, has made a tremendous so But how do you get that, uh, Ellie? How do you get that to happen to your children when they're young? That you don't want them to pass through some of the difficulties that you pass through. I know that you mentioned prayer and you mentioned the example. Is there anything more that you can recommend? The, the, the children are desperate. All I would say to that, and I can remember speaking to one of my children. I said, Your father is an example. And I will play some of my life study. And you may have I think I would, I would have done it in front of because they should have had that opportunity. And I told them what it meant to And it is only because of God's mercy that I'm here. So if I get burned, and I show you the burn, I said, I put my hand on the fire, and this is what it presents. 
if I get burned, it does not mean you have to get burned, but it boils down now to your choice. There is nothing more that I don't think I can say or do. If you still think that you want to enjoy life and the pleasures of sin, I cannot do anything more because I have just given you an example of what I would have passed. So it is up to you now if you are going to take it and want to live it, go down that road or if you are going to try and wait over and say, see my father explain certain things to me and I am leaving him and go to live so you mean that you have to learn hard did you? Well, some people do. It is sad to say it is very unfortunate, but some people do. And I thank God it is. But mm -hmm. some people do. Anybody from the audience that has a question or anything that you'd like to say? I just want to say that I was thinking about... Hold on a minute. I was thinking about... The prodigal son, and he wanted to experience life, and he took his possessions and everything, his inheritance, and he went his way. And I found that circumstances in life always have a way of bringing you to yourself, to yourself. And everybody doesn't experience the same things at the same time. So I'm thinking more of what we can do is truly ask God to shower us with his love. That we can extend that love to others. Because as we pray and as we fast and whatever, and to see for our children, our loved ones, or whatever, because we've been made to have a choice, they will still choose. But still being in a position to be there for them, then let them throw that curveball. Mm -hmm. And not being in a place being judgmental or whatever, because we've all been there. So I'm more thinking of understanding where you've been, understanding that others will pass through, and being in position to be in place to embrace someone with the love of God that you know when 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 calamities come or life throws that ball as I said that you're in a place that you can really help. Because at that time nobody wants to hear uh, or be judged judged on or whatever at that time. So it's 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 from our experiences we've learned from our experience but when have we gone through something? It's obviously to help someone else because someone stood in the gap for us. So I'm saying as a Christian, as a mother or whatever, as, as we all give our testimonies and we share with people, you might tell somebody that prostitution is bad and you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that, but then our parents hit somebody and, and they say that I need to feed my children. Obviously, an opportunity comes, and that's the only way that they think the way out, and they do it. You have to be there in a position to be able to help that person. You know, at times, I think you brought a very good example there of the prodigal son. And I was thinking to myself, it must have hurt the dad yes. to, to see that in spite of that knowledge of what's out there, the harm, the danger, you still have to let him go. Yeah. Yeah. And as we get, have this discussion this evening, wherever you are in the world, no doubt you look around and you would like to develop yourself in this or in that. And we hate to bring it certain examples. But one of the things that we've been looking at is that there are people, let's say you want to become a doctor, a medical doctor, or a lawyer. But there are persons who have run away from properties of their own with top level 
great cars and property yachts, but for their own life, for their own safety, they had to walk away from it. I heard the thing that was true. Uh, who is the head? Or who, who is the head? Right? Life circumstances. Now, the father of son managed to outlive the circumstances to get back home. Yeah, yeah. But everybody don't get right. back home. Right. So, we are saying, and we want to emphasize, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst. It is like an inner drive, like a passion, a craving. I don't know why, but to some who it is, that this might sound crazy. But I've heard somebody say, my hungry for a game of dominoes. Or hungry for a game of cards. And that person, we've heard of people who did go and eat their dinner. And play a game all night. And go home and try to take a bath and get it. To go back to work because the soul has that inner urge and passion for a game of downloads. But the point is, Jesus knows. And sometimes I want to say to myself, why would you have a formula in your book? How to make a nice sweet bread. Like some of, some of our friends here do. And you go, you try it out. You try it out, and then you finish. And you have somebody, one of your sweet friends, to take it and pass it. Pass it at somebody else in the, in the crowd, and they pass it back and start laughing. Because they don't follow a procedure. So I am just putting in this little piece. The Bible is there. The Word of God is there to guide us. Amen. And therefore, we cannot ignore the Word of God. The Word of God spells out clearly. If you want to be blessed, huh? Yeah. Your condition. Your condition is to be blessed. And if you by any means, find a, a, a little just like me a jar and you get in and get something. You may not know what is inside there to get you. Because there are people who get stuff all over the world. And how they get it, don't always be righteous. But then if you have gotten something in the righteous way, you can sleep well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if it's an unrighteous way, and you heard a couple of vehicles yeah. screeching and coming down your, your yard, you might just get up fast in there. Mm -hmm. So, really and truly, we're asking you to consider that the Word of God is very relevant. And we are living in times. We are living in times that we cannot. Tomorrow is not coming. That's right. Not coming. To anybody. Nobody. And you can be a millionaire today, and tomorrow you can be a pauper. Circumstances change. You may be a millionaire, and the currency change, and all of a sudden you have got money. So. We need to understand that Jesus did put this here because he had nothing else to do. It was important. We yeah. need to hunger and thirst after something that is right. Amen. 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 When we are thirsting after what is right, we need to be saved. And the other things will be added. So wherever you are today, if there's any other point before we wrap up. Yeah, I just wanted to mention um, that the scripture and the scripture that we gave blessed are those that hunger and thirst after righteousness, they shall be filled. You realize that it says filled. 
hear a lot. We have learned a lot from this discussion this evening. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've learned a lot. And the children are learning that you don't even think they're learning. Mm -hmm. um, you would see that sometimes a child comes from a home where it might see certain behavior. And then when you see that child begin to manifest all behavior there, you get so wonderful. So we, one of the things we have to do is make sure that we be good examples. We be good examples before children. And if it's okay, I mean, imagine a, a, a father, and I'm talking about abuse, but I'm not thinking about a, a different way. A father sits down with a bottle in front of him. He says, Come boys, we work hard today, come boys. And one after the other, and he told him to get drunk there. Huh? I'm not talking about a, a, a sit, a drink, I'm talking about taking enough to they get drunk. Huh? And then their uh, parents who can't put them to cell phone. But then want to beat the children if the children have more work to do and they still sneak in and use them cell phones. When you of yourself can't put them with cell phone. So it would seem to me as though some of the examples they said, hey, whether you realize it or not, seem to be more meaningful to the children than what we tell them. Did I get a fact, Mother Bird, right? In other words, you can be saying a lot of good stuff and say what you might not say, but we have to be good examples before the children are done. And uh, it came out this in the discussion team that sometimes we are kind of a little bit embarrassed to let the children know some of the things that we have been through or we've done. Because they don't always take it the way we would like to take it. They might say, I did often say in Bartlett, it's sort of back in your face. Yeah. Yeah. Well, 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 you, you don't want me to live my life. You don't remember you told me that you did so, 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 so. Not knowing that you have told them that particular incident to help them to understand that they should avoid certain things. So I hope and pray that somehow something that's been said to stir somebody to do it because, you know, it hurts the hearts of, this, of, of we who are intercessors to see after we have interceded, after we have pleaded, we see our children or our neighbors go down the drain. It, 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 it can't make you be happy. Okay? So, I thank you very much for participating. And we want to close up at this point in time. If any of you have been listening to this video and you realize that you have been, whether you realize it or not, you were hungry. You see, whether you realize it or not, you are hungry and thirsty for something. It is a natural process. And if you're, if you're not hungry and thirsty for righteousness, but you've got to be hungry and thirsty for righteousness. Uh, either A or B, you know? either right or left, <laughs> right or wrong. So, if you listen to this video and you want to believe with us more clearly, we would pray that you would join us in this video. Dear Jesus, I thank you. For taking my place on the cross of Calvary, you took my sin and my shame even before I was born. I confess I have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. I find myself Hungry and thirsty for things, for material things, and ignoring my master who needs my worship. I am sorry, Lord. Thank you for 
Forgive me. Let me into it. A better vessel that will worship you in spirit and in truth and become a good example in my community. Furthermore, Lord, I want to be filled with your Holy Spirit that can guide me all into all truth and I will become an ambassador to the kingdom of heaven in Jesus' name. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord cause his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord let thee let his discoveries upon thee and give thee peace. Now, nevermore, we all say, Amen, and we thank thee.